Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. This is Creator Conversations, a series devoted to helping up-and-coming digital entrepreneurs gain inspiration and encouragement through the stories of creators who have built their businesses online. Today, I am joined by Jamar Diggs. He is a social media strategist, and he teaches coaches, consultants, and experts how to turn their followers into paying clients. Jamar, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, um, we we were talking a little bit before um, before we went live, and it, it felt like you know we were already kind of diving into the conversation. I just I love um, that we were able to to just hit it off almost immediately, and I'm really excited to hear more about your story and how you got started. So. Um, first, I want to I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I am a social media coach for coaches, consultants, experts, anyone that uses their own personal brand in order to like make money online. Um, a lot of times, they're they're struggling with knowing how to start, knowing how to turn their followers into clients. Um, for example, if they launch something they think that's just doing a picture on Instagram is a launch and it's a little bit more complicated than that. And so I show them how to um, build that know, that know, like, and trust factor on social mm. media so that people are more easily to say yes to them whenever they start um, signing, signing with them or, or wanting to work with them. Yeah. And, and as, as this conversation goes on, I'd love to hear a little bit more um, kind of behind the scenes of, of some of the nuts and bolts of what you do. Um, but I want to, I want to take us first back to kind of the beginning of your journey. And, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in, um, social media strategy? Oh my gosh. Yes. So, um, <laughs> um, let's take us, let's, let's take it back all the way back to 2014, <laughs> which to where, um, I was actually working um, for a corporate company and um, also helping with their corporate marketing, but also managing um, over 250 real estate agents on social media accounts, right? Wow. And yeah. so that is already kind of overwhelming, but um, imagine being that real estate agent where they have just me <laughs> um, doing their stuff, but they don't really know like what's working, what isn't, how to do it, right? And so um, it got to a point to where I wanted to help other small businesses learn that exact same thing because it's so hard um, to know how to market your, your business on social media. And if you don't have like, like a coach or a consultant teaching you these things, you don't know how to devise a good strategy. You don't even know what it takes to make a strategy to actually achieve those business goals. And so I really wanted to help people on a larger scale and I kind of go kind of go deep with them in their own business and make things custom for them so that we can kind of get those results that they can get because um, it's one thing for someone to post for you, but it's another thing for you to understand and understand why something happens and um, understanding what you need to do in order to like get people to actually say yes whenever they're ready to book to book with you. Whenever you want people to slide in your DM saying, oh my God, I love you. It's time for us to work together. I, I've been watching you for weeks now. This, like today's a day. Like that doesn't happen just because you just post once a day, right? Right. There's a lot of other things happening um, during that thing because we as humans, we're, we are wired to like connect with people. And so I show people how to connect online without even meeting the, like the person that could be their future client. That's awesome. So you, you kind of um, decided to make a shift from a role where you were kind of managing this stuff on your own to one more of, and, and doing so kind of just really broad, kind of spreading yourself thin um, to, to equipping business owners with the tools they need to be able to do it successfully for themselves. And and being able to go deeper with some of these business owners. Is that right? That's, that, that's 100% correct. Uh, when it comes to um, social media management, it's that person has to be with you all the time. And that's not something that the company that I was uh, working for could even like accommodate or scale. Um, imagine me being deep with 250 real estate agents. Oh my gosh, that would be so hard to do. Um, and yeah. so, and so um, when I saw like exactly what they needed, like they didn't just need a social media package for like, 
daily posting, right? They needed a social media strategy and they needed um, tools and a social media sales funnel and a way to actually engage and activate people online to, um, to actually buy from them. And that's two different things. Yeah, absolutely. So, so as you were getting started, um, tell us about some of the challenges you experienced making that transition and maybe just along the way during your journey. Oh my gosh. So one of the challenges that I had 100% um, came in contact with was not knowing who I really wanted to target starting out. It was one of those things where I was like, all right, I want to coach. I'll, I'll take anyone. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, and that's kind of, that um, is okay but um what you end up doing is you you end up being like a jack of all trades and a master of none and Mm -hmm. so when you do that you um you can't your only competition is like someone else's price point and so um what i had to kind of say is like jamar what is your genius zone what do you like to do and what can you definitely help someone do and so i knew that i always got questions on um, my marketing where people are like, oh my God, Jamar, I wish that I, that I could do YouTube videos like you. Oh my God, I wish that I could um, be like show up on, on like, social media like you do. Um, how do you do that? Oh my gosh, what are you using? And I found out that like creating social media strategy, content strategy, actually um, creating content that activates and evokes emotions from people is, is like my, like, is my wheelhouse. Like actually turning followers yeah. into clients is like my wheelhouse. And so um, and I can only do that, or I'm, I can do that best with people who use their personal brand, who, who are using their own, um, face, their own selves as the face of their business. Um, because I can easily get people to, to like, trust me because I am authentic online. I'm giving so much value. I have all these, like these steps that I go through to make that happen. And I can definitely teach people to do that. And before I was just saying, oh yeah, you own a product-based business. I can totally help you. This is what you need to do. And, and it'll work, but it's night one, I didn't really feel good about it. Um, because, yeah. and, and, and two, there's like, there's so many different um, factors to where I couldn't scale my business because I was teaching different things to two to, to different people, but um, being able to niche down allowed me to make my own framework, to make a whole system to where I know where a coach is in their business um, by looking, by asking them like, like, like three questions, right? And then I'll yeah. be able to know, okay, cool. We need, need to start here inside the framework because you're struggling with like your messaging. You're struggling with like, how do you de- like deliver your service to people? Like I know how to, to do that so that everything kind of comes together whenever it's time to close that sale with someone. That's awesome. So I've got, um, that, that gives me a question that I want to get to. Um, first, I, I wanted to say I love what you just said about how you you asked yourself, um, what is your genius zone? Is, is that what you said? What is your genius yeah. zone? Yeah. Is that, yeah. is that a Jamarism or is that like something you heard from someone else? No, I probably heard it from someone like, I don't know, like Gary Vee or something. I have no idea. But I like yeah. zone, of, zone of genius, whatever. I, I honestly um, believe in only doing the things that you're good at and then outsourcing the stuff that you suck at. And, yeah. um, and so I apply that to my app. So not only like my back end operations stuff, but also just what my business model is. Like, what do you like to do? Um, because there was a point at the very beginning, I didn't say this, but when I went out on my own, I didn't start out as a coach. I started out as a social media manager freelancing, right? And so I was doing the exact same thing that I was doing for 250 real estate agents to other people like toy shops and um, yeah. book authors and uh, hairstylists and stuff like that. And I got burnt out because that's not really what I like to do. Like I don't like to make posts for other people. I like to have an overarching strategy. I like being like their marketing partner um, and helping them build a strategy that they can either teach teach to like their team or they can like get someone else to, to implement or whatever. Cause like that's that, that does not fill me up inside. Like making posts for people do, does not fill me up inside, but giving them, but, but empowering them to actually know what direction they're going with their marketing and their business does. Like, I love seeing like light bulb mo- like moments go off in, in, in people's heads. I yeah. love um, being able to 
see them even get more creative in their business because I'm giving them permission to be creative. I'm giving them permission to think about marketing differently than just one post each day. Yeah. So I, I want to, um, I want to pause here and, and I've got my computer set up over here with the live chat going. And uh, I want to say for folks who are watching live um, or even, you know, even after the fact, if you've got any questions um, for Jamar that, that you'd like for him to address, um, please feel free to leave them. I think near the end of the conversation, we're going to go ahead and um, bring some of those in, but, um, but yeah. we've got, we got a little bit of chatter going on, uh, oh, which is really? great. Yeah. Good. Um, so somebody actually, yeah, uh, El Michelle Media said "genius zone" and uh, <laughs> three exclamation points. So they're they're liking that. Yes. Um, Charlotte Duzong says hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we got we got some people in the chat. I love I, it. Um, I want to I want to talk a little bit about this um, process of niching down. You know, like zeroing in on the things that were in your genius zone and i hear i hear you saying like um you you wanted to stop doing the things that weren't filling you up and and um it seems like this process of niching down was not just you know a business strategy but also kind of a personal strategy to focus on the things that that you really enjoy that really fill you up so can you can you speak to both of those things kind of as you, as you focused in on more specific types of clients, um, how is that transition for you personally? And then also how did that affect your, your business? So when I, I, okay. So whenever I decided to like transition from only doing the things that I love doing, um, it was a little bit harder because I was creating content around like um, getting people to hire me to do their marketing, right? And yeah. so I had to kind of pivot my content to say, no, I need to teach you how to be empowered to do your own content or um, more like positioning myself as an expert and the authority to make sure that um, they aren't saying, oh, can you just do my marketing for me? That's a different type of person. And yeah. so, um, so with me kind of going through, through that, it helped me, one, tailor my, my messaging. So whenever I, so the first step in like my coaching program is that we identify your ideal client. And I feel like every single coach talk, talks about your ideal client, but um, we all have a different um, way of doing it. Um, some of them uh, stop at like male, female jobs, what they like to do on the weekends. That's not what I'm talking about. I, um, mine is more based upon um, psychology and what what is motivating them to buy something yeah. right and so um, mine is not just like how old they are um, gender sex whatever what job they have but it's also what are um, the things that are keeping them up at night right so what are those pain points that are keep on, that that they are struggling with the most how is it showing up in real life so it's not enough that that um, someone cannot lose 10 pounds for the month they hate that, like their mother is, is always saying, you should probably lose some weight. They mm -hmm. hate that. That is something that shows up in life, right? And, yeah. then, um, and then what are they doing to stop? Like, what are they doing that is not helping them solve that problem, right? So what are their, their habits that they think that is, is helping them, but it's not? And so, for example, I just brought up like a, like a health coach or something. Um, their idol client is probably looking on Pinterest for all these like fitness inspiration, like recipes and stuff, but it's staying in a saved, but it's staying on a Pinterest board and not actually being acted out, right? And so things yeah. are just staying there or they're watching yoga with Adrian up on YouTube, but they're never ever doing anything else after, right? So there's no follow through. So that's so, so once you know more about that type of person, you're able to make content for that person. And so I had to dive deep into myself and figure out okay, Jamar, that person that you had a year ago is different because you're not trying to get someone that just wants to do it for, um, that wants you to do it for them. You need someone who is struggling, um, not struggling, but like it's, it's, it's a challenge for them to even know where to start. They don't really know like what they should be posting or 
every time that they post something, they're hearing crickets, but they are trying to launch something next month, right? And yeah. so that's a different type of person. And once you know more about that, that person, what is motivating them, what are some of their pain points and what do they want to get to, then the content is easy because now you know and um, know what, what to do. And so when I started doing that, only when I started being super, super clear on the person that I wanted to target was when I started getting um, coaches to follow me. When I started getting the right people that um, were um, like shooting me DMs saying, oh my God, I love your content. Um, yeah. Uh, can you please, like, can we like hop on a call? I think I need to work with you. Like, um, or those people downloading my lead magnets. Like I can now make, create a, that's another thing. I can create a lead magnet to get people on, on, like, on, like, on my email list that is not just like some person that is not in my idle client thing. So I can create a thing called, um, which I have the follower to client blueprint. So one of the pain points of my coaches is that they want to convert their followers into clients, right? And so I'm able to make a blueprint just for that, that would help them get that, that quick win. I wouldn't be able to make that if I was still trying to coach everyone. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope, I hope people are getting the the absolute gold that you're dropping here because and and so this is when i when i got into marketing and um you know like i i did business for myself um doing video production work and it was it was a leap for me to get from like you have to help people identify their their target demographic right like um because i would i would ask people like so who is who is your target market? And nine times out of ten, they'd say everybody. I'm I'm mm-hmm. trying to get I'm trying to get everyone, and they'd like list all kinds. Like no, we got to narrow it down. Um, but I love this distinction you're making between um who people are and what they what they do or what they're doing, what's motivating them. Um, that's a that's a huge distinction because. Um, you can, you can define a demographic, but that demographic doesn't tell you anything necessarily about what's motivating the, the purchase decisions they're making and, exactly. and what are, what are the things that they're feeling and thinking behind what, you know, next steps they're ready to take. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's absolute gold. Um, yeah, so, you. so tell, can you tell us about some, um, just as you've, as you've gotten into your business and, and over the years, can you tell us about some like really big wins or things that you, you look back on and you're like, yeah, that was a, that was a turning point or that was an inflection point in my business. So I would say one of my biggest wins was after I really honed in who I wanted to work with, um, I started getting um, corporate clients like that wanted to work with me. And I was like, oh, this is great. Like, they, and, it's, and it's almost like you don't even try. You don't even try. So like I had like a few nonprofits reach out to me that wanted to have like VIP days to like learn the same system that I have that I can totally like just kind of make it for their business. I had, um, I had ODU reach out to me. So ODU University um, reach out to me and I taught wow. their whole like um, their whole uh ODU sports, like their student athletic division on how to use social media um, for, to get butts in seats doing games and stuff. And um, I was like, oh my God, what is happening? This is great. All I'm trying to do is, is target coaches. And then uh, while I'm targeting coaches, other bigger businesses are listening and they're like, oh my God, I need to work with you, right? And so yeah. um, it's very funny that how, and you would think that um, everything that I'm saying, like I'm, only targeting coaches, right? But it's nothing wrong with the corporate client either. <laughs> and especially yeah, if, you, uh-huh. if you can do the same thing that you're teaching a coach and just tailor it to them for a higher premium, then that's great. Um, and so it was like really cool. And um, especially as I was doing that, it gave me that momentum that I needed to kind of say, oh my God, this is definitely working, it's worth it. Um, because sometimes we have that moment in our business to where there's ups and downs. And yeah. especially if I'm switching from um, social media management to coaching, you're like, oh, maybe I should just go and just do it for people. Or no, people want to listen to me talk and teach them how to do it on their own. 
there is um, value in, in that. And it's very motivating to have people, um, even bigger companies like notice that and want to like pay you for that. And, yeah. um, and I think doing that, that gave me that motivation to keep pushing, to keep going. Like Jamar, you're going in the right, right direction. Let's keep it moving. Let's go ahead and do it. Keep on making your, your, um, your YouTube videos. Keep on dropping your bomb content on Instagram. Um, keep on making your stories with, with your bonnet on. People love it. So just stuff like that. Um, it just gave me that motivation to keep on going. That's awesome. Yeah. And there's, there's this, uh, I, I think this fear that a lot of people have when they consider, you know, niching down that, well, if I, if I just focus on this one, you know, more narrow group of people, I'm going to miss out on all this other stuff. But your, it, it sounds like your experience was you niche down and you, you came to be known as an expert in this specific thing that you did, but then people outside of that niche were still trying to, to do business with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, we don't recognize that, um, all you need is to be the expert in something. You need to be the go-to authority in something. You need to, um, have something that you always talk about a system that you always talk about. Right. And, um, that doesn't prevent you. It doesn't mean that you can't take on any other clients, but they come to you knowing that you are an expert in this aspect of social media in health in finance, in therapy, whatever that may be, um, you got to talk about something because if you become too general, then they're not listening to you. You just become like any other coach or any other um, consultant. And so, and you kind of, you kind of um, are not being recognized. And so when I, be when, when I kind of drew my, um, put my stick in the sand and said, this is what I'm about. This is it. This is me. Um, I'm expert in social media for coaches, things like, like that. It did not deter anyone. It just made them want to work with me even more. <laughs> I guess yeah. That yeah. <laughs> it's cool how that happens though. And, <laughs> and, um, and I think that's really encouraging, especially for, for people who have been thinking I, I need to niche down, but, but you know, that fear of missing, you know, missing out on other clients is kind of holding them back. I think that's, there's a really great lesson in your story for, for those folks, especially. So tell, tell me a little bit about, um, your business as it exists today, kind of give me, give me the full scope. So I know you do the, you, you do the coaching and one-on-one and -on -one stuff. Tell me a little bit about, um, maybe some of the, some of the other aspects of your business. Yeah. So, um, it's right now it's split um, into, I, I believe three parts. Some, sometimes I add on one or two every now and again. <laughs> um, and so um, the core of it right now is the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but um, I also have like ways for me to create a like passive income to where I'm able to uh, sell trainings that I have um, done either in the past or just for, um, or just for that actual thing, um, templates, uh, basically like trainings and templates um, that I um, host in like, in like Podia, for example, and I'm able to have a, a captions masterclass or a content strategy um, uh, training or a, um, what else do I have? Social media and social media planning templates in there. And, and, and I think I have like a welcome, a welcome sequence template for people. And so I um, use that. So at, like people can 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 go to it whenever they want, or I use those as down sales. Like if they're not ready to work to, um, to work with me yet, um, they can um, buy one of those um, those trainings, and they'll you know they'll get me virtually without me actually having to put in any extra work. <laughs> and, um, and then along with that, I'm working on a group coaching program to where I kind of move everything that I've taught one on one into a group setting and. It's almost like um, it's like a business marketing intensive, an eight week intensive that we um, kind of go in and, um, uh, sorry, we go in and plan your offer, um, find out who your who your ideal client is, um, work on your messaging, work on your reach, um, and then work on your your email marketing all in one, along with some other bonuses too. So I'm working on that as well. So um, right now my business is um, currently. Um, in three 
in three parts, like one-on-one coaching, a group program coming soon, and digital products. Awesome. And and I love, there, there's um, a good friend of mine uh, talks about this idea called the umbrella method. And it's kind of this idea that you, especially when you're in a business where you're developing your own systems, like you have with, with social media strategy, um, as you, as you do that, you're basically creating, um, intellectual property that you can sell. And, and so the umbrella, the, the idea of the umbrella is, you know, like you've got your really high tier, um, expensive products here that, that are more exclusive, like the one-on-one access with you and your ability to really go deep with people. But you also have lower ticket items for people who maybe aren't ready to, to jump in here. And I love that you're, you're kind of filling in the, the spokes of, I don't know if spokes is the right word, but, uh, but you know what I mean? No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I am slowly building, I'm building that out now because, um, it takes so it just takes time to like learn what is those things that people like want right and yeah. so i don't want to and so i don't want to just make it and say okay y'all come come join the mastermind come join the group coaching program and also work with me one on one it's just i will be spreading myself a little bit too thin at that point in time but now i have like like three tiers right if they're not ready um they can totally buy a digital download or course that I've already made or anything like that. And um, pretty soon there will be other like kind of things underneath that umbrella that I'm really, really excited about too. So if I'm understanding correctly, the, the coaching and, um, and, and consulting came before the digital products, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about how um, your work with with uh, your clients informed and and kind of led you to create some of these tools that you that you now sell as digital downloads. Oh yeah, so one of the um, one of the benefits this is I feel like I'm a broken record, but this is just me all day. The benefit of knowing exactly who you want to talk to and knowing their pain points and things, and um, is that when you create content um, just for just um, just for people to come into your one on one like coaching program or just having like hourly coaching sessions, um, you know now what they're struggling with. And now you get to hear when, when you have that session with them exactly what they're struggling with. Like I know that um, everyone that I come in contact with has issues with captions. They hate captions. They just, if they could hire someone, if they could hire me to just write their captions, they'll be like, Jamar, thousand dollars, please just, just yeah. do it. Like they were like, and, um, and so they struggle with, like, with that so much. And so um, what I have been able to do is just listen to the frequently um, asked questions, um, the things I had to work through with, um, with my um, clients. And then I said, okay, um, what, what can I do to have this same conversation multiple times <laughs> without yeah. having to be part of it? <laughs> and, and um, or if I was getting this, this, this question on Instagram or something a lot of times, um, and the, and the, and, and these people weren't ready to actually be in a coaching program, then they could get help from me in some kind of capacity. And so, um, that's actually what led me to creating like the, like, um, creating your content strategy in like three steps and like how to, um, create profitable money-making captions, right? I, um, I break down like a whole captions framework inside that, um, that masterclass that now you can just rinse and repeat and just do, right? And so I'm able to make I'm able to make easy frameworks or, or easy to remember ways to, um, to do things and put it in a course and monetize it without having to always be there and always um, be the person to um, teach them this, this, this thing up front. Yeah, and, and it, it's, it's incredibly valuable too because it's not like, it's not like they're getting a lesser quality, they're, they're, they're not getting lesser quality information. This is, these are things that you've learned through hours and hours of work with actual clients who have real problems that, and conversations that you've had over and over. So now you know um, when people are looking for something, you have really well distilled um, quality information to provide for them. And I love, 
I love the relationship between that one-on-one -on -one kind of interaction and, and consulting with clients and how that can inform digital products. And I'm, I'm hoping that, that folks who are listening are kind of taking mental notes about like, okay, maybe, maybe there's something, you know, I know, or some framework that I have or some system that I use that I can turn into a product. Oh is there, God. is there anything, is there anything that kind of, I mean, you, you did kind of touch on this, but like, was there, was there a specific moment where you were like, I really need to turn this into a product and start selling it? 100%. And it was the, so it actually was like the captions one um, because, so <laughs> I have friends that think that I'm so predictable. Like if I were to do an Instagram story, they already know how I would do the Instagram story and they would make fun of me um, because of that. And, and, and these people are not marketers. They just kind of just see, oh, here comes Jamar. I know what, what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking one day and I said, oh, I got to write a post real quick or something. And I just, do, 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 do. and they're like, oh, you're done. I was like, yeah, that's it. Or, and I, and so um, I guess the things that um, became easy for me, someone else was like, how does it take you that, like, um, that short amount of time to write this, like, to, like, to write this post. Or, yeah. um, so it's, I started realizing that there was um, these things that I thought was easy and um, that is super hard for other people. And like, when I would have like workshops, um, it will, when I would have in-person workshops, um, that would be also a question that they would have. And I would just say, oh, just structure your stories like this or just structure your captions like, like this. And um, after a while, I was like, I bet someone would pay just to learn about captions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or someone would pay just to learn about stories. I haven't made made one yet, but maybe I will. But so yeah, so um, that's kind of what happened to me. Like I realized after I started ask, getting asked about it, and um, it wasn't until someone told me that I like until someone said how easily it came to me and and how hard it was for them was when I realized, oh my God, I should be giving them something that they could get, that they could buy to um, learn how to be just like me. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that seems, that seems like such a small thing. Like I wouldn't even think of the, you know, making captions as like, oh, I could sell that as a product. Um, but I, I think it's great that you, you didn't underestimate how powerful just that, that one specific piece of all of the things that you teach could be for, for people who are really struggling with it. So um, I, you, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but I want to, I want to hear a little bit more about your vision for the future of your business and maybe some of the things that you have on the near horizon and, um, and then maybe some things that you're hoping for maybe five or 10 years out. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. So uh, my vision for the future of business is to, um, right now I have, I have, um, my coaching program, my, my digital products and my, um, group code, my, my group coaching program, the immediate future, like in like the next month or two is to fully launch the group coaching program. Like I see, I see myself, um, just diving more and more into coaching because I love it. It lights me up inside. I love just, I love my clients so much. Like if you ever saw a coaching call, you, I think that you would laugh. Like you would just like, is he really saying this? And like, are they having, like, it's just, it's just so fun. So um, yeah. I, I love doing it. And so what I want to do is I want to do more of it and I just have to figure out how to do more of it. And so um, right now is the, is the group coaching program. I'm also doing more, more, um, more webinars, more like workshop type webinars or, or, or master classes to where I'm, I'm developing like two or three um, like core pieces, of, like core um, foundational um, lessons that I wanna teach people. And I'm just gonna um, start doing online webinars for that. And um, then I think in the future, I would love to have some type of mastermind or some type of like retreat or like, oh my God, I would love a retreat. That's kind of like something that that's like five or 10 years from now. But like, I think, um, cause my thing is really about community and it's not just like the Jamara show, but it's like, a, I wanna be around people who 
are action takers and who are like wanting to put in the work and just go. And I have this thing where I want to hang on to them even after like the coaching program has wrapped up. And so I'm like, wait, can we like hang out and stuff afterwards? And uh-huh. so I feel like a mastermind or like some kind of big thing like that will keep us all um, like together and like cheering for each other. Um, and that's kind of what, what I want. I want to grow my community in a way that we are more than just one coaching call. We are an actual, like we are accountability buddies. We um, keep pushing each other and keep setting goals that like we think is challenging, but we know that we can do it. Yeah, that's awesome. I love, I love that idea too, especially the, the retreat and developing those deeper connections, those longer lasting connections. Um, what are you, what are your thoughts about, uh, cause I'm, I'm assuming right now if, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're just doing this on your own right now by yourself. You don't have a, a team that you're working with necessarily, correct? I, for the most part, it is by myself. So I do outsource. Okay. Well, I, well, I guess it's not really by myself if I outsource, but I do outsource a few things okay. like my video, like my video editing, um, certain, um, um, copywriting, like writing like sales pages and things like, like, like that. I work with a sales page um, copywriter for that. Um, uh, I'm in the process of hiring an online business manager um, to help me because I need to be the CEO and someone else needs to handle all the other things because yeah, my anxious butt will just, just kind of shut down if I have too many things going on. <laughs> and so, um, so I'm in the process of like hiring more, um, more, positions to help me kind of stay in the creative CEO role that I love to be in. Like, I want to focus 100% on clients and like, I don't want to focus, like, I don't want to worry about like the, like things that don't really, um, that I'm really good at (laughs) or like, I want to stay in my zone of genius as much as possible. So, yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is kind of a callback to what you were saying earlier about really just focusing on the things that you're good at and outsourcing the things that don't come naturally to you and that don't fill you up. And, um, and so I, I was curious to know, like what you saw in terms of, um, you know, potentially adding more team members and stuff like that to your business in the future. And what is that process like for you? Like, what is your, what is your comfort level with um, hiring people and, and kind of growing your business in that way? So I am such a big um, advocate for managing expectations. So um, even as so even in the past, I have so I I have a very small team. Like I have a copywriter, I have a video editor, and um, and uh, like and she also like doubles as like my graphic designer or anything like creative like. If I ever shoot my YouTube video, she's like behind the camera, just being like, don't say that, say that again. And <laughs> she's, yeah. like, she's like, stop being stupid, and, right? Stuff like that. And um, so I manage my expectations with them like a lot. Like I, like I, um, a lot of people that I have been drawn to, um, I met them in my corporate marketing times, right? And so we have a really um, good foundation, a really good friendship. And I know them, I trust them with my brand 100%, like my copywriter, oh my gosh. She gets my tone of voice so good. She'll throw in like, like, like a little, yeah, girl, hey, sis, like real <laughs> quick. And I'm like, yes, Jacqueline, yes. And um, so she gets it. And, um, but, but anyway, I managed that by saying, okay, I have grown to talk more about money because I have um, understood that like money is energy and um, I don't want to um, overpromise. I don't want to under deliver. I want to say, hey, um, how much would it cost for you to do this for me? I need your help with this project or whatever. And, and I think on what happens when, when people are um, beginning and they're saying, oh my God, I can't possibly hire someone for this. Well, they don't, they think that that they can't because they don't think that they have, they're not having the actual conversations to like fit it into their budget. They're not yeah. saying, hey, I'm going to cap you at 350 for this month. I want to cap you at 250. I'm going to cap you at this. Or maybe I just need to pay someone $15, $15 an hour to do these admin tasks because my hourly rate is much higher than, than that. So this person is actually making me money instead of like, it's, I, I, it's, it's costing me, me money. So people, um, I had to strengthen my relationship with money um, since I started my business because um, I 
thought about it because I have like a very crazy scarcity like mindset going on. And so I had to kind of kind of chill out a little bit and say, Jamar, you can't do it yourself. So you're going to have to get someone to do it. Now, how much it costs, you got to talk about that so that you can fit it into like into your budget. And I think that's kind of what happens when 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 people um, are struggling with like outsourcing anything. Um, they know that they don't have time to do it and they know that they are not good at it. So they just don't do it instead of asking for it for the help for the help. Yeah. And I just speaking from my own personal experience, the the first thing that pops into my head or the, the first thing that really um, pushes back against me when I think uh, in the past, when I thought about the idea of, you know, th this isn't something I'm good at, it'd probably be good to hire somebody to do it. And I even had friends who were encouraging me to, you know, at least get an administrative assistant or something like that. And it was that scarcity mindset that always came back that was like, you, I mean, are you even okay yourself financially? And so there is, there's some work that you have to do one to, to battle that mindset, um, which is extremely difficult in and of itself. And then, you know, there's the work of really getting your strength um, money wise and, and kind of getting your own things in order. So I, I know that's, I know that's a huge challenge to overcome for I a lot of creators. Yeah, I do want to say something um, as well. I want to add on top of that. Um, whenever I have paid or I invested in my business um, in these people, um, whether it's outsourcing or actually hiring a coach, I have always like made more money. Like I've always made, made more, like, more money. Like I actually hired, I hired a sales coach um, like a month ago and I already, <laughs> I already made over what she is um, charging me <laughs> just from her, just from like me, just from meeting with her one time and, um, and her telling me what to do. Right. And so um, the mind, the scarcity mindset um, comes in to me, like with me all the time, but I have to think, I have to kind of um, re remind myself that Jamar, every time that you do this, you make more money. This, this yeah. happens. Money is just math. Don't put drama behind it. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, oh my God. I like, I learned that from someone the other day. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, money is, it, it is just math. And all the stuff that is happening in my head is just drama. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's very encouraging. And I, I appreciate you sharing that part of it as well. So uh, before we finish up, I did want to get to a few questions that came in on the chat. Um, and some of these you've, you've already touched on, but uh, so this, this one from Elm Shell Media says, how do you, how do you shift your business from posting to coaching? And, um, and so you, you really went into this, but just kind of highlight for us again, like that transition from, um, being the person who does the, the posting and stuff to actually coaching people to do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very easy transition um all of the um the walls that we put like all of the, the ways that we think is hard is in our head because we're already experts in social media or like, so you can go and teach people how to do it and so um the first thing that, that that i would do is stop taking management clients keep keep the ones that you have and then um only manage for them but then start changing in your content start um stop start posting um more authority building content in um, in relation to like what are the pain points of your new clients, right? And then create a lead magnet that um, that goes to that like to that pain point that that helps them achieve that result that that they want. And then also start connecting with people and giving them advice in the DMs on how they can um, do things or whatever. Like I don't even if you need to um, get someone in for free just just to get that um just to get that social proof for like one time because all you need is one client to say oh my god i learned so much from 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 x and they they taught me this i made this much money by just listening to what they said um that testimonial already positions you as an expert in coaching so then you just keep on keep like keep on going i love that those are that that's very practical for people who are wanting to make the shift from, 
you know, doing the work for their clients to teaching them how. Um, and then this other question uh, was was something I'm really curious about. So it's, do you think, do you think it's more impactful when a client posts their own content? And I'm assuming versus, you know, having having somebody else do it for them. And I think I think I know your answer to this is going to be yes. But I'd also like to hear a little bit of your philosophy on why it's more impactful for people to post their own content versus having an outside company to do that for them. Mm -hmm. So um, the way that I have seen is that no one, no one can sound like you. No one mm. can, no one can write a post like how you want. And what I have always noticed whenever I did do social media management, whenever I would have to literally sit with that person for a very, very long time to understand their tone of voice, to get the feel. And then even then they were still critical of what I put out. And I was like, okay, well, you're not really doing the work and you're not really helping me. So you get what you get, but, but, that's not, <laughs> but, but, um, but it just, it's just a lot harder to convey the things that you want to convey um, on social media without it being from that person. If you are like, if it's just like, you're just that, that one person, it can be very um, generic. And whenever you hire someone to do your social media and you're like a solopreneur, you're just like the face of the business. Um, they don't know you. They don't know um, what makes you different. They don't know the past stories that have happened to you. And those are, and, and those are the, the, um, the things that actually drive the needle in your business. Those are the things that make people want to relate to you that make you want to that makes them want to work with you it's not really even about it's not even about the work that you do is if they like you is if they trust you like if you're a finance coach and you're just 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 posting money tips and like how to save that's cool but i want to know how 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 did you um get out of debt in two years i want to know what struggles in, like you had when you were trying to figure out okay i know my thing is to save money month but I really want to buy um these tickets to the Beyonce's concert like how is this like I don't know how to prioritize this like those inner struggles that that that, that people have all the time um a social media coach cannot I'm sorry a social media manager cannot convey that effectively to your idle client like how the actual coach can yeah yeah that's that's really great insight and it's it's tough you, you know you talked about how uh, you've got a copywriter and they've been able to kind of take on your own voice because of the relationship you've developed with them. But there is, there is kind of this boundary where like at some point um, you really lose just the, the authenticity, the relevance, the kind of the currency of, of having these thoughts and ideas come from your past experience and what you're, currently experiencing um so yeah. i th i think that's really really great stuff yeah well this has been a wonderful conversation and um i'm gonna go ahead and close this out here but before i do can you tell people jamar where they can find you online if they're um, interested in working with you hearing from you following you yeah um it will be Jamar Diggs everywhere. So J A M A R D I G G S um, dot com on my my website. If you want to buy some digital products, go to Jamar Diggs dot Podia dot com. Okay, and if you um, want to follow me on Instagram, it is still Jamar Diggs. So yeah, I look forward to like connecting with everyone. Awesome, and and I hope those of you who are listening or watching absolutely go check Jamar's workout and uh, and hit him up on social media. There's one more question that I'm going to go ahead and um, bring in before we let folks go. And uh, this is from Play Amica. And it says, how do you balance giving out free knowledge and charging for a resource? Okay. It's a, it's a big question to close on. Oh, no, it's fine. I got you. It's That's a scarcity mindset. Shut it down. Um, everyone can Google. So it, you're not unique. You are not um, special snowflake. Everything that you know can be Google. So just understand that, okay? What they're paying for is access to you. They, mm. You are the shortcut. So that's what they're paying for. 
So give out all the things that you want. I tell people everything. I just took, I just um, gave you, you guys my idle client um, thing that I charge clients for in the coaching program. But they're going to still be part of my program because that's one, that's not all that they're going to be learning. They're going to learn how to actually implement it and devise a strategy from it. Um, so like, don't think about your content like that. When you hold on to things that you know, you're turning away people because um, you're not trying to help anyone. So just give it out for free, girl or boy, or whatever, and um, and just watch watch how many people come to you asking you more questions, and then you're going to be able to actually like set up a booking like to book a call with them. You'll know when to like give them that that booking link. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that. That I think I think that's probably the perfect thing to go ahead and close on. So. Folks, thank you so much for for tuning in, for watching or listening wherever you are. And Jamar, thank you so much for joining me on this call today. And uh, we, uh, I, I really appreciate the conversation and the time that we've had together. And I look forward to to talking to you more out on uh, social media. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right, goodbye, everybody.